it is a question that a lot of parents, especially in the day and age in which we're living in right now, are really having to wrestle with. Um, I went to public school. Uh, Jane went to Christian school. And I came to faith in Christ as a 12-year-old and was uh, used by God to some degree to lead and to influence some of my classmates to the Lord. Jane grew up in a Christian school, and I think it's all right to say this, she really didn't come to faith until after high school. And so it's not a guarantee that putting your kids into a Christian school is going to make them a Christian or necessarily you know, make them a missionary or a pastor or a world changer type of thing. But what I will say is this, is that education is one of the most important things that as parents that we give to our kids. And not every school is equal. I know that uh, some schools are, have much more parental in, involvement. Uh, their curriculum that they use is maybe more straight down the middle. It's just re- reading, writing, arithmetic, and history. But there has been a a trend that has begun to permeate public education. And I I just want to say this first before I say anything else. If you are a public school teacher, we love you and support you and are grateful that we have salt and light (laughs) teachers in our public education system. Because we really do need that. Because what is happening is there is seeping into our public education, a really, uh, I'm going to use this phrase, it's a popular phrase, but it, it kind of encompasses it, kind of a woke ideology that is no longer just kind of a neutral environment that like, like when I went to high school, but now it's actually in some, in some ways, it's trying to brainwash our kids ideologically. And that's, always, that's been true for a long time in universities, but now we're seeing it seep down into the very lowest levels. And again, it's not in every public school system, but it is showing up in a lot of them. This is why it's important, I think, for parents to be involved in school boards. It's why we do need Christian teachers. It's why we need Christian superintendents and principals. But if I was a parent right now, living in Kalamazoo, Michigan, or West Michigan right now, and I was raising kids up, I think I would do everything in my power to put them into a Christian school environment. Not because it makes them a Christian, but because the framework and the worldview and the ideology is going to be shaped through education and through their peers. And I want, I want my kids to have the very best that they can have. And I don't wanna have to fight what they're learning in schools about sex, about gender, uh, about politics, the lack of history, and, and some of the things that are going on in there. You're going, in any type of environment, you're gonna have peer pressure. In any type of, it doesn't matter Christian or secular, in any type of environment, you're going to have to train your kids and you're going to have to address these issues because it's everywhere. It's not just in school, but if you can, if you can mitigate it, whether that's homeschool, Christian school, uh, some, some sort of a charter school, or you just happen to be in a school district where that is not an issue and you can get involved and you can really disciple your kids through it, that's the most important thing. The most important thing is parental discussion and communication relationally with your kids, helping them navigate these issues. If you think you're going to protect your kids from ever having to deal with these things, hear about them, confront them, have to think through them, you're mistaken. You're going to have to. It's just the world that we're living in. Um, but yeah. that's just... I, I would say five years ago, I, I remember being in a staff meeting and someone asked a question to you similar to this, and the response was more about hey, just disciple your child, let them be salt and light. It doesn't, right now it doesn't matter, but in five years, it feels like everything has just completely accelerated to now the point of actually it would be better to not be in that environment. It's similar to what you were saying, right? Yeah, I, I think there's some truth in that. Jane, did yeah. you want to say something? Um, yeah, I think totally if that is a, a possibility, but I think to the days of just sending your kids out to school and not being involved in their lives yeah. is done. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like when they come home, used to be you could kind of throw the backpack in the corner and not really look through it. But now I think it's so important to look through it, see the books they're bringing home, see what they're being taught and all that. I don't think it's so much that the public school is going to train wreck your kid. It's now that we have to parent 
yeah. our kids more right. than we had to before. Yeah. And um, not to be lazy parents, which was so easy to do back then because you just assumed or yeah. it was what it was. And now just to really like dig in and spend that time. And if you notice the kids are acting different or whatever, like what's going on? It's like truly parenting and getting into their um, lives. Yeah. yeah. So and, because and, I know it's not everyone can do Christian school. Not everyone's called to homeschool. Yeah. And so you take it, get involved in the school, be room mom, be room dad, be recess, do those kind of things, get in, know your kids' friends, all that kind of stuff I think is so important. Yeah. And just remember, Daniel had to go to university in Babylon, which was a pagan, uh, idolatrous culture, but he, his faith... He was able to go into that arena and he was able to not just survive it, but he came out actually affecting it. I think it's important for us to understand though that that's Daniel as a mature believer. This isn't a child who's being, whose ideology and worldview is being formed. And so that's, that's different. And so no matter what you do, whether you believe we're supposed to have our kids in public school or whether you uh, do private school or whether you do homeschool, your, the, the greatest investment you can make is, like Jane said, is parents involved conversationally in helping disciple your kids. Your first disciples are your kids to be able to process and think through this stuff consistently. Yeah. And one more thing. I think it's so easy to think that when they become high school seniors, whatever, going to graduate, go off to college, um, that you still have a voice in their lives. So do RSM. That's amazing. But yep. to, I remember Tiffany, when she graduated, she wanted to go to a public university. And we just knew that she wasn't in the place to, to handle a public university. And so it was like, you have two options. Actually, three. You can do public, but you're going to pay for all of it. And we're not helping you with That's it right. at all. And two, you can do these two Christian ones and we'll help you with it. And then that's what she chose to do. And she has amazing friends, who in her relationship with the Lord in that. And um, just so thankful that we yeah. kind of took that stand. So even just to take that stand as your kid is going into college, you're still the parent. You know what I mean? You can be guide and direct them in those, um, in, in that they still need you to do that. You know, yeah. not just throw them to the wolves and, you're 18 and you're going to a secular university and all the, that goes on with that. So, that's great. yeah. That's great. Yeah. Thank you, Jay.